Uh, so, uh, so we're talking about these business models fit for sustainable growth, and I will, uh, you know, um, in open infrastructures. So even the title um, uh, hides a lot of connotations, and it's um, it's uh, it's something uh, you know that is. Uh, this is what I will uh, try to explain, and then of course, you know, from the open air view that we are an open infrastructure and we are, you know, we have a vision for growing and for um, having services around Europe and the world. Uh, how do I go? Okay. So uh, as this is an open access uh, week theme, community over commercialization. Okay. What does it mean for open air? So for, for, the, for the, you know, to begin with is that uh, we are, uh, we are, we have been operating and we, uh, we see many other open infrastructures popping up. And this is the way that um, uh, uh, we see the world of science or scholarly communication uh, going. So these uh, open infrastructures, uh, we have community-driven principles where openness, inclusivity, transparency, and ethical governance. And ethical governance means you know, the, the diversity, uh, inclusion, uh, equ equity. Uh, remain at the forefront of our mission uh, as being, you know, uh, a, a re in infrastructure for science and then for open science. Uh, we believe that uh, we need to serve the public good, okay, uh, uh, in a way that benefits all regions and all, all stakeholders equally around Europe and around the world. And we know the diversity in Europe, we know the diversities around the world. And what we need to have in mind is to foster responsible, sustainable growth to ensure innovations make a meaningful impact on society and on the economy. So in, in, in brief is that community is in the center, our community is in the driving, uh, in the driver's seat, and uh, com you know, uh, and commercialization may come, may not come, uh, but as long as uh, as as the community is driving. Now, oops. Uh, let me start with what is community, and you know, for open air, what does it mean? Community is open air's pillars of sustainability. You know, it's 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 our pillar from day one when we were. Um, uh, first uh, launched our first service in 2009. Uh, we start. We had started with the national open access desks. They were in the driving seat. Uh, because why? Because they are there in order to support national research communities to facilitate open to access to open science resources and to be the connectors to the institutions, to the member states, uh, to 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 whatever is uh, being uh, done locally. So. Uh, uh, the 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 NOAs have been our um, connection to the to the actual communities, a community uh, a multiplication to other communities. Then, uh, in uh, a couple of years ago, we opened up our uh, governance model to include not just the national open access desks but more members. Why did we do that? Because in the beginning, it was open access to publication. Now we're going to open science and open scholarly communication, and that includes many other uh, many other facets. You know, data, software, education, material, citizen science. So what we believe is that you know there are many institutions and many organizations out there that they uh, they are very much actively involved uh, in in those uh, in those facets. So. Uh, we have an extended member, you know, 36 countries, 36 uh, nodes, but then, you know, we are extending our uh, member base. And then apart from that is that uh, we are linking to communities around Europe and around the world. When, you know, it's an international networks and initiative, we can think about research infrastructures, we can think about, you know, um, uh, infrastructure providers uh, in RDA or EOSC, we can think about all of these uh, all of these uh, communities that we listen to and we make a very active um uh, proactive i would say uh effort uh, to engage with them so community again you know this is this is this is in the center we try to listen you know in 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 some cases even though we listen to them you know uh, it's uh, it's taking a, some time in order to translate what they uh, what to transform on what they say to services, but uh, they they are in the center. Now, uh, 
some of the services, let me say about some open, uh, something about open air services and funds. So open air has from the day, from day one being a service driven infrastructure. We have about 13 front end user services. Uh, and by front end users, we mean, you know, they can be used by researchers or by librarians or by repository managers or funders or research administrators. All of these are at uh, uh, operational for the past uh, 10 years and uh, a TRL 9. So they are robust, run, operated by, by our professional uh, data centers and by our service and supported by our service uh, managers. And uh, of course, you know, TRL 9 means that, you know, we have a service, but it never stops. We continually evolve and we maintain. Maintaining, you know, operation means is is that new data is coming in, uh, support services, uh, we have training, we have all of these about uh, related to operation. It's not just technical operation, it's also part of the resources on the human uh, support. And then we need to maintain, which means is, you know, whatever, uh, because it's digital and it's technology, so that means is that we have to always upgrade to the newest technology, to the newest this and that. And then uh, we need to evolve because um, uh, the scholarly communication ecosystem is not stale. You know, we have new ideas, new connections, new new of everything, new functions, new of everything. So we need to continually evolve. So those are the, you know, the, the, the basic of the services. We have three supporting services, open orgs, open plateau, and interoperability guidelines, which are, you know, the, the ones that are really, really at the bottom, uh, providing some kinds of glues. And then we have the collaboration with external providers, not just what open air provides and open air and our partners, but also external uh, collaborators like open citations, open APC, or open sciences. We have been very, very good in, in, in operational capacity and availability. And then uh, what we need to, I think we uh, we will upload our uh, latest uh, annual 2023 annual report on our site. It's used by th thousands, tens, and hundreds of thousands of users uh, for, you know, uh, all around the world. And so so I think, you know, as, as an infrastructure, as a service infrastructure, I have to say that the team, all the teams, technical and support teams have done an excellent job in trying to, you know, to, to get everything together. Uh, about 19 services is not an easy task. Now, uh, if, you know, what I said is I'm going to give you a picture of what I said is, you know, those are the nice images that we have for every service. And what you will see here is that these services mainly on the top are about, you know, interoperability, infra services, not every which means is that a researcher would not directly use the service. It's, it's, it's aimed for research managers, for repository managers, for people, for tech people, for IT people who are setting up their own infrastructure and they want to connect to, you know, to the open science world. Then we have these uh, services which are used by the end users. You know, Zenodo is a, is a, is a, is the most successful example uh, with millions of users um, uh, uploading and sharing data every day. Argos, Amnesia, Explore, and Open Plato. So I'm not going to go into details about that. You know, we have our uh, our uh, you, you can view them in the catalog. And then we have a set of services, which we call value added. I'm not sure if this is the right terminology or community services, where, you know, you can um, uh, start uh, building uh, portals. You can start uh, building assessment uh, uh, and mo tracking monitor assessment portals or uh, the one from EpiSciences that, for example, you know, you can build a, a, a journal, you know, uh, uh, as a part of the Diamond Open Access um, uh, initiative. And then last but not least, we have, you know, again, some uh, infrastructure services that uh, uh, that are used by 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 the by the by the intermediaries, whoever they are. Okay, so this is this is the idea of all of these uh, of all of these services. So if you if you know if if we are able to see them, is that in the majority of these services are infrastructural services. This is why we say you know open air is an open scholarly um, communication infrastructure. Okay, now 
what do we do about uh, funding? Okay, because uh, we need to be, you know, sustainable. So how do we go about it uh, right now? So the current funding is that I would say that about 80% now comes from European grants uh, from Horizon Europe. Then we have membership fees from our 53 members, but those are, you know, uh, very indicative numbers because it's, they're not covering operational of the services. They're covering only the office and, you know, the engagement and, and the things that we are doing as a network. Then we are uh, involved in, um, we have started to be involved in the past two years in procurements is that when uh, somebody needs a service and they procure a service. So this is, you know, one way for us to provide our, not out of the box service, but you know, to build services uh, based on uh, our expertise and our existing services. So this is you know the, the most notable one is the EOSCA EU node, where if you go to the newly launched um, uh, EOSCA Open Science, no, it's a uh, Open uh, Science Cloud or Europa. You know, maybe somebody can put this uh, this link here. Uh, Open Air is uh, is uh, is uh, is, uh, is uh, delivering the resource the resource hub based on the Open Air uh, graph. And then uh, what we will be talking about is that you know we are thinking you know we are not thinking we have thought it for about two years now. So we are rolling out the new you know subscription services for institutions, mainly for institutions and 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 funding organizations. And of course, we have been looking into other community-led funding models. You no, know, so you know we know scores, we know uh, charity funders. But again, you know, I, I think. What we think is that the way is that, you know, we, we need to move, you know, even though keeping the public uh, infrastructure in place is that we need to think about, you know, uh, sometimes as businesses. OK, and I will explain, uh, you know, uh, wh wh what I'm saying here. So what we say here is that, you know, it's sustainable growth. You know, can we rely on funding forever and ever and ever? Yes, we would like that to be, but you no, know, this is actually not the case. And you know, uh, and uh, and and things are moving, you know, away from uh, from research projects, from funding cycle to funding cycle. So the the thing is that what does it mean? It means that you know we need to operate and expand the infrastructure and services in a way that remains financially viable. Okay, ethically aligned. And inclusive. Okay, uh, it's in our motto that we don't want to leave anyone behind. So while we continue to serve the core mission of openness, accessibility, community-driven governance, science, uh, whatever, and also preserving as Europeans uh, to preserve um, our digital sovereignty. Okay, you know, you know, maybe in our country, maybe in Europe, but this is uh, something that you know, in the in the new world of uh, you know of the new geopolitics, this is uh, very important. Now, this is you no, know, this is you no, know, uh, this is very nice. It looks very nice on paper, but then you know, what are the challenges? Okay. So the challenge is, as a public and open infrastructure, uh, we have an inclusive, you know, community governance. Okay, so that's really nice, nice to have. But you know, having a, a community governance, it costs money. Okay, it costs money because you have you need to be engaged with everyone. You need to be uh, having, you know, resources to have, you know, your ears open, your ears and eyes open in order to diverse the needs, the, you know, the diverse needs to address them and uh, the interests of all stakeholders. And this is taking, you know, this is, this is, this is sustainable. You know, we, we count on this, but, you know, somebody has to fund this. Then we have to balance the core operation. Excuse me. Oh, okay. I think, you know, somebody needs to mute. Uh, we need to balance uh, core operations and innovation. What does this mean? Is that in most of the funding that I mentioned about from the EC or from the from the uh, you know from wherever we get it, uh, funding usually or you know I could say never comes from operations for operations. Okay, so uh, we get funding, we develop something, we test it out. You know during uh, throughout uh, the course of a, of a. Of a, of, a, of a project and then the funding stops. So we are left to operate and operating digital infrastructures with huge you know, amount of data as for example is the graph 
or Argos, which is a service that uh, has, you know, that has uh, multiple uh, VMs to support it, or even the help desk is, 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 is really costing us money. And then, you know, what we need to do, we have, you know, we need to make sure that we remain relevant, okay, we, with the operation. So because everyone is uh, looking for 24 seven, everyone is looking for good quality, but then, you know, uh, we need to have the money also for rapid innovation and responsible to new demand. So, so it's, it's like a company. Okay. So an open infrastructure is like a technological company that we have to have a team for maintaining operations and operating and supporting our users and another team uh, for uh, for for doing innovation and that uh, in technology terms it's all it's, that doesn't only mean people but when you're dealing with big data it it duplicates the uh, the the, the amount of uh, computing resources that we need to use and computing resources are not cheap okay now the data growth and scalability so you know we start with uh, with, with services uh, that have to do, you know, with the prediction A on data. And then the service somehow uh, exponentially grows. Why? Because there is this new data source that, you know, the commission wants us to harvest software heritage with 4 million records. 4 million records means that, you know, our graph is exploding. It means that we have to have the new APIs from Argos to the graph to, you know, these, these I don't want to go to the details, but, you know, the data growth and scalability is something that you know uh, needs to be very much well um, thought out in the process of this open infrastructure. So, in the end, you know, where is the openness versus commercialization? You know, we don't like this world, but you know, uh, this word, but this is something you know, uh, and we need to find something else. Is we need to have uh, to strike a balance between keeping the platform open and exploring sustainable revenue models. So we're talking about, you know, additional uh, revenue uh, streams other than funding. This is what it is uh, that we are trying to do now in open air, uh, because what we, you know, what we, what we realize, oops, what we realize is that, uh, first of all, we have to do responsible sustainable growth, okay? Because you know we are an open infrastructure and responsible. It's not just because it's it's all over the place, but because we are the gatekeepers. You know, open science and openness and transparency also you know brings us you know accountability, brings us uh, all of these uh, connotations that I think you know I could say in if I could put them in a bucket, I would say you know responsible. So open infrastructures currently sustained primarily by uh, public funding. And actually what is, uh, what is you know, the, the, the model is that they give you the, 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 the money and they give you well ahead, you know, the, the, the proposal writing. And then at the time that, you know, you get the proposal, things have changed, you know, because uh, this technology and the digital uh, environment is moving so far, uh, so, so fast. Then, uh, so so the business models that you know in our thinking is that we need to have uh, to transition to a demand-driven approach. For you know, I should have highlighted here the selected value-added services. Okay, and if we do that, and we you know we are asking money for selected services to institutions, then you know that could be seen as a shared cost and investment in open science, okay? And then, you know, uh, and then we're thinking about uh, the, the different revenue and different uh, cost uh, models. But what we need is, you know, we need to have, you know, two things here, because this, is, this has been a very hard exercise for us, is first, we need to align with the user demand. Second is we need to align with the open science principles. And then uh, third and foremost is we need to align, you know, the openness with models, pricing models that are used in the technological sector. Everywhere you go, you know, if you buy teams for your institution, you know, they tell you, you know, this is how much it costs per person per seat, per license, in order to do X, Y, and Z. Okay, so, you know, they have a pricing model. And this is, this is you know, this is what we have tried to do. So, again, you know, if, if, if we, if I can recap what I said is that, you know, is the reality says that operating, maintaining, and evolving services along with supporting and listening to users is, 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 is a very nice journey but has big financial demands, okay? Then what we currently do 
is that you know the, this financial de you know demand is met through a risk you know financial risk for the for the European Commission by the European Commission for open air. Okay, then what we need to do, and then what we see, not what we need to do, you know what we see, and maybe this is what we need to do also, is that uh, this financial risk for open science is gradually shifted from the European Commission to the member states and associate members. So what the European Commission is saying is that, you know, I have funded all of these infrastructure networks, you know, for long enough. I will keep some of the core, but then, you know, the, the, the individual, uh, the individual uh, member states, they have to take uh, care of their own houses. So as, as you know, as, as part of us being a, uh, an infrastructure, this is what we're doing. So, you know, we have funding cycles and we are trying to, you know, to, to have a diverse revenue stream, uh, keeping the, the funding cycle, if, if possible, for new involvements, innovation, scaling and all of this. And then try to see how we can, you know, get operations going. Okay. Now, uh, while we are doing that, you know, in our thinking is that we have some red lines. Okay. So the revenue generation for open air must not compromise the openness and accessibility of knowledge. And this is something that is very well um, said uh, very many times by our, our board and general assembly and members. This is so, so, so for, for any reason at all, we're not compromising in openness. So we're talking about everything that we do, open, open source, uh, openly available, open uh, transparency, everything. Then uh, the, the, the second, the, 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 the most important red line is we're not going to be asking researchers uh, to, uh, to, to pay for any service that they uh, have in open air. Okay, and then that the core open science values, for example, and you know, uh, you know, is it a rich country or a poorer country? This is you know the diversity and the, 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 the equity and inclusion is non-negotiable. Now, well, how do we go about it? So we say, you know, I showed you all of the services that we have, and we say that the key infrastructure services, for example, like, you know, open orgs, uh, guidelines, provide, uh, you know, probably open APC from the uh, University of Bielefeld in Germany, uh, things like that uh, will remain open and accessible to all. But there are some services that we are building what I call, you know, value-added services, you know, mainly for organizations, for institutions, research institutions and funders that, you know, we think that uh, they can afford uh, if they if they really want them uh, to, uh, to, to, to have access to them, to pay a subscription model. And this would be, for us, the way we see it is their, um, their inclusion and their connection into investing in open science, okay? Infrastructure, not investing in open science, in infrastructure that goes beyond their um, beyond their um, institution. That's for them. For us, it would mean that you know these services that we're putting out for uh, for um, uh, for for subscription fees is that on our on our side we have to professionalize the services. We have to really you know get our act together. And see, you know, what we offer to the to the to, to the to the institutions is is the best quality that they can find out there, and uh, and um, so this in this way is that you know we need to find the strategies that benefit both the community and the infrastructure. Okay, so this is this is very important. Now. In, in in a nutshell, you no, know, because Androniki will go. Uh, I think uh, Androniki will go next. Is what we have been doing is we have been devising in the three um, in the three uh, services: uh, connect, monitor, and then for some Argos, Androniki will explain. Not for all of Argos, we have a flexible tier based on organization size and needs. Okay, uh, flat rate subscription fees that cover initial setup costs also. Uh, because I have to say, you know, the, the subscription fees that you will see, they have, you know, uh, they are far from uh, what you would get by uh, from uh, from a commercial provider. A commercial provider, and I'm not talking about the profit about of the commercial provider. I'm talking about the the the, the actual cost. So so we have the actual cost of the services, and then because we 
already currently have money from the from from funding is that you know we are we are saying that you know this is what uh, you know how much would uh, an institution be willing to pay and uh, we've done our uh, our due diligence and we say that you know these are the rates so so and Nico will explain and then once we uh, start um getting fees subscription fees for these services is that uh, we know that it's not just the operations and the technologies but also is uh, support we need we know that support will be increased so we need to anticipate this you know this this extra for the human resources uh what you know as i said is that you know currently all of the services uh we have support by ec funding okay so what we aim for only the services, not for the graph, not for, you know, provide, not for interoperability, not for amnesia, is to have, you know, a critical mass for full self-sustainability, okay? This is this is our goal. And our, if we if we're able to achieve that with, you know, with your support, then uh, it would be a very good way uh, to prove that an, uh, an open infrastructure, a public infrastructure with open source, with everything transparent, with everything that you know that we are there, we 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 are not competing with others, okay? Uh, because uh, there, there are other other services for for connect and monitor similar services from others. Uh, it's just that most of our costs are on the graph, okay? So what you see here is on. The cost, and maybe under Nikki, you should explain it a bit better, is uh, the cost of when you have an, you come to us and ask for an on-demand service. That means is you know we mobilize a group of people. You know you, we have an, an extra VM. We're doing uh, uh, things with a graph. We're doing things with whatever. And then you know in a month's time we set up a dashboard for you, and then we operate it. So so this is amount of time that you know that we uh, that. Um, that costs money. Also, what I would like to say is that for our members, whatever prices, I don't know if we, Andre Nick will, will show the prices, is that we have a 30% uh, percent discount. And why do we need that? We need that because our members are, uh, it's not just you know the fee that they are paying to open air, it's not, it's not very big. It's because our members have taken the time and have uh, put in resources to co-shape these uh, these uh, services with us, and this is important. So, if, if if somebody would like to you know to 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 buy a subscription fee from from Open Air, uh, my advice to them would be for, for first to become members of Open Air, to join the community of Open Air, to learn from each other, and to be able to say you know uh, firsthand that you know what they like and what they don't like. Now uh, I stop here, and then Andra Nikki will uh, will will say things about Open Air Connect, uh, Open Air yeah. Monitor, and Argos. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so what do we have here? We have a service that uh, that used to operate all these years with projects. So it was based on projects, funding via projects, or it was based with. Uh, let's say domains that needed a specific uh, research gateway uh, projects that needed a specific gateway and then we were there as partners and we were providing uh, this new uh, subservice for a project so we had only that but now with the new reality with the new needs as we said we we understood that this is an on-demand service that we have to to promote and it, it's a good chance also for us to test it out. So up to 2023, you see we have 49 personalized research gateways and we have a huge growth number, growth rate, which is fantastic for us. But now we need, we need to see with this new model, with the hybrid model, with the new subscriptions that we have, how it will go and what do we do already? We have community calls, as you can see, the next one is November 5th, where we ask the community, because it's also about the topic of, the, of this uh, webinar. The community is here. We don't do things without having all this interaction with the community. We have them, we advise, we move forward, we try to keep them updated, and then we have all these good lo feedback loops, let's say, to improve the service. Uh, what we have for Connect, we have, uh, we don't have it here, so I see it from my web uh, browser open. 
Uh, but you can click next so I can also provide more information. Than that. Thanks. We have uh, one, two, three basic tiers. Maybe you don't see them, so on the right side, you, you can read carefully. So we have the standard, the advanced, and the premium. We call it packages. We did call them like this because we wanted to make sure that whoever comes has a very good overview of what we offer and the features we offer per package. And that also changed the pricing we had. So again, the user needs specific things for, uh, through a specific package and has a, a, a price, a subscription fee, let's call it better. And then the next one who comes, which is a bigger, big, big, bigger needs, more things, more advanced features. Yeah, thank you for sharing the link again. Um, see, uh, can see more things. So you can, you can have this information via the Connect uh, website, as you can see, or through the Open Air catalog. What we did for all services, because you will see it later with Montor and Argos also, we have a kind of trial periods. What do we mean? We understood and we got that information also from the experience we had so far and from the community, of course, that we are not, as we said, we are not a business. We were not, let's say, driven by business, but community, which means that we try to listen to someone that comes to us and say, this is my need. This is what I'm looking for. Uh, can you do it? And then we offer a trial period. With this trial period, we can test out and we can see if that really makes sense. And we can come back and advise you if you need a specific package, maybe you should go for the next one or the previous one. Uh, we also offer backup options, like if you feel like you need more time to decide after the uh, the subscription ends, then we offer you an option that says, don't worry, we will uh, keep a backup of your information, but we will pause any synchronization, which means all the information that is there is remained there, but it's not gonna, going to be updated from the graph until, uh, you know, from the next die of the subscription ends, that, this, that the subscription ends. So we have all these safety, let's say, uh, things for you, safety options for you. So whatever you decide, uh, you get all the information you need. You get actual qualitative information with Connect. And can we move on to Monitor? Another service that again is uh, very community driven. And you see there is a lot of interaction with the stakeholders, most you know, funders, institutions, uh, it's Monitor. Monitor has 40 dashboards and uh, uh, again, a very good growth rate in 2023, 122%, which was very good for us. It's again an on-demand service, which means you will come and you will request a personalized dashboard. You get all the, the latest metrics and research impact indicators which means fields of science, APCs, sustainable development goals. You have um, everything that, that it's proven by the community and the research experts to be valid. And we have into to the graph and then the graph uh, manages to pass this information to monitor. So you have nice visualizations, nice metrics, nice graphics, private or public information. You can decide whatever you want. And then the community calls again, have this, let's say, bilateral information with community, with uh, users, uh, new features, uh, new indicators. So we try to, to have everything, as Natalia said, transparent, open to everyone. So you see what we, what we are doing. Can you move on to the next one? Yeah, and here we have subscriptions three options we have the standard the advanced and the premium we try to keep up the and the national which is not here because it's a it's a special case let's say so for uh, standard advanced and premium you see we try to keep the the wording even the wording similar for connect and monitor and you will see later argos because the user that comes to us differs which means the features will be added on next category and next option, and the fee might be raised a little bit. So everything again is there, is full, transparent. You can contact us directly. I will try to find a, a way to, to, to make it happen for you. Uh, for the national packages, which is the special case, it's like, as Natalia said, it's another revenue stream for us to keep the service alive, of course, and benefit uh, um, stakeholders that need a very, very big uh, 
it's a solution. Big, what I mean by big, I mean that it's you don't host anymore. Imagine you don't host any uh, one organization. You host plenty of organizations that are under the umbrella of a nation. That's hard work. That's something that demands uh, more uh, people to work on it, uh, more uh, CPUs, GPUs, RAMs, hardware, call it as you want. So this is, again, a very flexible option for monitoring. Maybe you want to try it first as an organization, and then if you see that you are very, very satisfied, you can have in mind either to upgrade or you know, uh, when there is a procurement, contact us and we'll try to, to find a, a way to make it happen. Can you move on to the next one? So again, Argos is another case, is the third one that we have, uh, the third service that we have subscriptions. Argos has uh, 4.7, as you can see, uh, thousands of users in 2023 that they covered 2000 grads. We had 50, 560 founders. What do we mean by that? We mean that we had uh, data management templates for from 560 founders, mostly in Europe, uh, organiz that can be, you know, some institutions that provide funding. And that was very important because the first thing you want to do is when you use a service is you want to log in as a user, as a researcher, and you want to find the specific information you have to fill in to get your fund, to get funded. The, the commission is the number one uh, main user. Yeah, I see if you need a demo, yes, please uh, contact us. Uh, you have plenty of options for, um, for Argos. We try to separate Argos into many categories because it was it was the, it was harder for Argos because because we had the special cases like you have Argos on cloud for researchers. What do we mean? It's the Argos.openair.eu where you you go there and you log in as a researcher. You use it for free. That's it. You have Argos again, the same service but for institutions. It's about funders that want to use Argos but they want their template to be inserted in the system and their users to use it. So it's another, let's say, branch of it. Then we have local premises. What do we mean? We mean that, okay, we have all the experience, the know-how, which is very important to run, to install new features, to improve Argos, to listen to community and again progress and see what we can offer uh, running, you know, what is running out there to the to the technologies, how we can implement all these latest, uh, let's say, AI or any other high trend uh, feature. And with Argos uh, premises, with Argos local premises, what we can do is instead of someone using an organization using the cloud, we can go and say, you know what? we can uh, redeploy uh, Argos on your local premises and then we will do all the, all the hard work for you. You don't have to learn from scratch all the things you need to prepare. We are there for you and then you are the, the one that should manage the service. But what we do, we support and we are there to update the information, the service, uh, you know, give you the best uh, features that we, all the features that we're gonna have in the future so you are aligned. And you can use your own logos or uh, more options. So this is very good. We have two packages again for this, standard and premium, depending on, on the size of the, of the organization, on your needs. Again, it's about your needs. What do you need? Not what we can do. We can do many things, but it's always what you need. And the last option is that uh, Argos is based on an open source software, uh, OpenDMP. So what we say is, we are very transparent, we are very open, we are an open infrastructure, we, we offer all the services uh, with, uh, you know, all the options with, uh, with you, for you, and we say, you can download the open DMP and you can self-manage it, it's there, we run it, we have it on GitHub, and then you can take it and you can do whatever you want. But there, you are responsible for, for all the installation, uh, you know, configuration, everything you need to do. But again, it's another option. Again, we run community calls. Uh, next one is uh, October 30, so it's in a few days. And uh, please move on. Yeah, so here you can see all the options we have. Right now, you, you see the link on the catalog. 
but this screenshot is from the new website of, of, uh, of Argos that will be implemented soon, so you, you can see it online soon. Uh, and I have a, a small change. Instead of slash uh, pricing, uh, it's slash subscriptions now. So I can uh, update you with the, with the link. Give me a second. OK, I will do it later. And then, uh, as you can see, all the packages, all the options different uh, for for each user. So you can readjust really and you can have all the all the options you need and it's really flexible. Can you move on? So takeaways. I, I've listened to what Natalia said. It was a long journey. So we have two slides for the takeaways. One one here says uh, we should remain science, open science should remain a public good for everyone. Yes, otherwise it's not going to be the way we know it uh, so far and, and the way we used to know it and the way we use it now. And then it's a very, it's a big struggle sometimes to keep this balance with commercialization, sustainability, again, to be community driven with open access infrastructures, because it's also what the users uh, have used to know and the way they used to know things. And the uh, open air services are free for researchers, as we said. We, you, you didn't see any pricing, any fee, any subscription fee for researchers. Everything is for institutions, organizations, funders, uh, uh, as you will, uh, you can go through the slides. Uh, it's only the subscriptions are only for on demand services. So we wanted to make sure that we can ensure this scalability and competitiveness means that we are not alone out there. We have also other options. So in order to keep these services alive and running and you know on high level, we need to look also what's happening around us. And then we said reinvestment. Reinvestment is about we know that with with the prices that we have with the subscription fees that are public now on the catalog and on the services uh, websites. We are not going to, It's we, we have to say that again and again, we are not business driven. We are not making money out of this. We try a, a proportion of the service to work and keep it alive and engage more and more communities. So it's about innovation. It's about uptake and engagement, as you can see here. here. And the three services are Connect, Monitor and Targos, plus what we didn't mention before, we try to have bundles of services like for Connect and Monitor. So if an organization needs to use both services, they can apply and they can come to us, contact us and you know request such an option. Can you move on? Yeah, so that was my favorite, I think, slide because it's uh, we try to, to have um, a graphic to show that it's not a, that it's about this balance. Maybe it's not always 50-50. I mean, we would try to make it or to be close to that uh, option, you know, but <laughs> it's difficult. Why? Because as we said, sustainability means that we had to pass through all these 12 years that Natalia said. And uh, I want to remind there was a podcast uh, a few months ago that we explained also some information about how open air uh, started, how it evolved and what we had in mind. And now that things are running and we see what is in mind, when we see what happened in practice, actually, as of today, you, you might understand that if you go also, uh, if you browse the open air website, you, there are many internal changes. We had to... Uh, you know, create new skills for the team to enrich the team, the governance model and also uh, the structure of open air uh, evolved. We have many working groups now. For example, there is the business working group was not there years ago. So it's been one of the year uh, almost. Yeah, I, th I think so, Natalia, one year and a half. It's it's there. So we we try to you know, to respond to the needs of the communities also, to the external changes, to position ourselves again, and uh, to engage again more people with the services. At the same time, you have to be transparent, you have to be open. Uh, as we say, you have to look the competition. Uh, yes, thank you for the link to the podcast. Can you go back, Natalia? Thanks. And then uh, you have to keep the services uh, evolving and, you know, to check the growth if the things are going based on, on a plan. And then the community, as I said, you know, I will go fast because I see I don't have much time. It's about the behavioral adjustment also on the new condition, which means that 
new new information and for communities and users uh, maybe we have to be super clear about everything so they're not confused as i say so they they can adjust also it's about trust uh, they trust us we trust communities we work with communities we support they support and th this is how we move on so we include them in the process we um, offer them this participation to activities community calls as you said webinars workshops and we try to keep them in the loop as much as possible uh, that's it for me thank you very much i went fast <laughs> at the end <laughs> Uh, thank you, Natalia and Veroniki. Are there any questions you would like to ask? Please feel free to write uh, in the chat or raise your hand and unmute your microphone if you would like to ask something. So, no questions. Um, I think we can close the meeting. Thank you so much, Natalia and Androniki. We will share mm -hmm. to all of you the notes to the presentation and you can feel free to contact us for any questions. Thank you. Yeah. Have a and nice also, evening. You know, oh. I want to add something. If there is someone sure. who needs to ask us uh, something about a service, just go to the website, contact us via the website. We are there. We're going to reply to any questions you might have. Maybe you need time to di digest this new information. So feel free to write uh, an email and we will take it out yes i think you know even even if questions come up you know uh in the next uh, days or weeks mm -hmm. or months please do not hesitate to call us because mm -hmm. uh, as we said in the beginning this is a transition for 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 for, for open air also uh, again we are not going to be having fees for any services infrastructural services basic basic infrastructural services and no services you know, for researchers this is our mandate by our general assembly we're not changing that it's just that as we said we have selected some services that open air we think they are very useful we think the numbers you know the 40 dashboards the 49 connects people uh, uh want them but we are in the unfortunate position that we're not uh, we're not funded for the services for the operation services by anyone so uh this is this is why we turn to institutions because we know that institutions invest in open science and uh, they invest in open science only when they care about the service okay no they're not no most of the people in the institutions they know what they want they know how to judge a good service or not and even if our services you know not every service is perfect we would like you to come on board and you know co-shape the service with us because this is this is something that uh, you know we are striving for so this is this is this is the mentality that uh, drove our you know our our this new uh, endeavor in 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 how we can also work with the community and again uh, i don't like the word commercialization when open air is not being commercial it's just that we want uh institutions or users institutional kind of users to co-invest with us and we want them to turn to open uh, to open infrastructures this is something very very uh, important but they need to understand that you know in their journey of turning to open infrastructure you know uh, that they need to understand this is not for free okay but if they pay somebody something they need to um, to realize that they are also in the same vehicle, in the same car, driving the same car, so they can guide the car into the direction that they want. So this is, you know, this is what I would like to say in closing. Thank you so much, Natalia, and thank you everyone for joining our session. And hope to see you in our next one. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye bye.